Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. I've got a a big this is not just one headline. There there are several a conglomeration of a bunch of headlines that, that are concerned with the same thing, the same uh, subject. And it has to do with the Clovis first model and the peopling of the Americas. Just to fill in some context before we dive into everything. The Clovis first model is, was originally the first hi- theory pr- uh, proposed about how um, the Clovis indigenous people of North America came to inhabit North America. And in a nutshell, the Clovis people were the original inhabitants of North America. The dates vary, but around, I guess the earliest is about 13,200 years ago, before present, so about 11,200, 11,500 BC, somewhere around there and no earlier than that. The idea was Clovis hunters came down the Bering Land Bridge through the ice-free corridor, and in about 800 years, they wiped out all the mammoths that were there at the time with their uh, fluted points. Their, the fluted points being the, the hallmark of Clovis people. They had these, uh, these pointed tools that they say they used to not just hunt mammoths, but wipe them out completely. Obviously, after some time has passed, a lot of people had an issue with this, and there are um, there were a lot of discoveries. There's a lot of evidence, and there were a lot of new alternative theories about the peopling of the Americas ever since. So this article highlights the debate between the people who stick with Clovis first and the the alternative views. When they the caption here says an inland route was likely, although a coastal route was possible, researchers claim. And they're spe- in this article, they're specifically talking about the alternative being the coastal route here. There are other there are other discoveries too, which we'll get into in a bit. But the inland route means the ice-free corridor, and I'll show you guys the picture of that in also in a second. Uh, so basically, this I don't want to go. This article just t- it's just highlighting the different evidence for each side. Although there isn't much, they don't really have that much evidence for the ice-free corridor, except that there are archaeological sites. But they haven't found any of those uh, those Clovis tools inside the ice-free corridor. I think they found them in Alaska but not in the ice free corridor themselves it, itself very quickly uh, let's go over this article real quick new new world colonizers from asia may also have traveled by canoe down northwest pacific coast and perhaps much farther as critics of the ice free corridor hypothesis have, have argued but less evidence supports that possibility archaeologist ben potter of the university and colleagues argue in research People didn't reach North America until after 16,000 years ago as temperatures rose near the end of the Ice Age and shoreline food sources expanded. Okay, so this year, 16, 000, or this date, 16,000 years ago, or 14,000 BC, year is like the loot cutoff that they're drawing the line at, the Ice Free Corridor uh, uh, researchers. Advo- on the other side, advocates of a primarily coastal migration have suggested that shoreline-hugging seafarers enter the Americas much earlier, with some archaeological evidence putting people in South America by nearly 20,000 years ago. Uh, that That's interesting. I don't know if that has to do with the actual coastal people. The, uh, actually, let me go back. Let me take a couple steps back really quick. So the coastal theory is... Let me just pull up this picture right now, right here. The, in the red, this arrow here, this was the original theory that they went through this uh, the, between these two ice sheets, which is, I think, the Cordierian ice sheet. I can't remember the name. Oh, uh, such as an L. Uh, Laurentide ice sheet. And between them, before they uh, merged into one, the, for a little bit of time, there was a crevice here, a corridor, rather, that researchers claim that the, the original people came through. This coastal route here is the uh, alternative theory, which also makes sense to me that they had canoes and they were just, they weren't deep seafaring vessels. They were just uh, coastal vessels and they just hugged the coast all the way down to South America, eventually South America. That Those are the competing theories right now. Although there are other, other um, examples and other discoveries I want to go over uh, in a bit. So basically this article is talking about in a nutshell, this article is saying both can be right. Both could have happened at the same time. One does not preclude the other. And let's try to find more evidence for both. That's basically what it is. Available evidence doesn't tilt one way or another, says Tom Dillahay, who led archaeological excavations in Chile and Peru, which we'll go over in a second. 
Too few ancient human sites have been excavated and too little ancient genetic and ecological evidence is available. To dub any one model as the best supported, oh, I mean, uh, yeah, it's too little available to dub any one as the best supported. Uh, early South Americans display clear cultural links to later South American groups. Human colonization of North and South America proceeded in different poorly understood ways. This is where I think he's on the money. He's getting closer to the truth. I don't think, let me pull up the image again. I don't think that these people from Alaska and from the Bering Strait are the only people who, who found the American continent and peopled it. I think there is probably some other migrations that came maybe not from north to south, but maybe from east to South America, specifically Australia to uh, South America. And I'll explain that in, in, uh, in a bit. And this is the abstract. Uh, I'm not going to go through this, but this is the Ben A. Potter. Art this article derives from, cites this scientific article as, um, as uh, the reason why they shouldn't throw both theories out the out the window so there have been a bunch of articles this is an example of an article that supports the coastal route a glacial retreat had cleared a path along alaska shores by 17,000 years ago so basically in a nutshell this article highlights the time about 17,000 years ago when the end of the near the toward the end of the last ice age things were starting to warm up and all the ice where she's presumably where, where she's standing here everything here was under ice and uninhabitable and you couldn't really build a canoe like such a flimsy vessel and go go down until it's, things started melting away and that's what this article kind of um centers around stuff was melting away and it became hab uh, i mean possible for for humans to go down the coast and the reason how they came to this was uh they found the remains of a seal and they radiocarbon dated the seal to about 17,000 years ago, and it suggested that the area became habitable soon after the glaciers left. That's what their, um, some of the evidence in support of this theory is. That helps the case for sure. This other article is, the, I think we, ca we went over this one in the footprint episode of, uh, like a couple weeks back. Uh, footprints put people on Canada's West Coast 13,000 years ago. So this was the uh, Calvert Island thing. And these people were not related to Clovis people. These were completely different people. And the reason why they think, they think that is because none of the Clovis uh, tools were found on the island. There's no map here. But this dates, these people date to around thir 13, a little bit, a little bit earlier than the Clovis model, which is like 13,800 years ago. Here's another another article that tries to refute the ice-free corridor model is uh, the Arctic wouldn't have provided enough food for earliest Americans' journeys. So th this may, this is pretty compelling too, unless unless they packed a bunch of food and they knew ahead of time that the ice-free corridor would have been barren and there wouldn't have been enough vegetation to, to sustain people. Unless they packed a lot of food and then left, then yeah, this this article makes a lot of sense. Barren landscape, a passage between colossal glaciers that once covered North American Arctic shown here in present day might have contained too little vegetation and wildlife to nourish the earliest human migrations into the rest of the Americas. Before this article came out, that, that kind of crossed my mind as well because they haven't found anything of note in the ice free corridor. The only thing that they know is that it was there. I mean, they haven't found any of the Clovis tools in there, not that I know of. So it, it's kind of an assumption that they had people go down there. Although it does look, if you look at the picture again, it does look, look like a good, it looks like a case because they have found, if you look at my cursor here, they found sites here, archeological sites here and here and all, now along the coast as well. But the, inside the ice sheet, I don't believe that they've found anything of, of huge significance. They might've found a few things, but I don't think they found anything uh, of significance because just because the dates are really they're they're relatively young compared to everything else. So even if the ice free ice free corridor thing did happen, it probably happened a little bit later than than the more cutting edge evidence. Here's another one by Bruce Bauer. Uh, dating of stone tools adds to evidence for pre Clovis inhabitants in North America. So in Florida, this was yeah, this is 2016. I remember reading about this a while ago. Uh, they found stone tools dating 14,500 years ago in already in Florida. So right away, there are people in North America before Clovis actually came in. And then here's this one, which is 
what I wanted to get through. The people roamed the tip of South America 18,500 years ago. This was in Monte Verde. So Monte Verde is in Chile. Tom Dillahay, who we talked about earlier, he was the head scientist, or the head researcher in charge of this. And let me just read off a few evidence that they found here. So Monte Verde in, in uh, Chile, they found, uh, Tom Dillahay found remains, or he analyzed remains of, of year-round habitation preserved under a peat bog. So here's some evidence. The evidence includes a 60-foot long structure, remains of two hearths, preserved meat and firewood, three human footprints in hardened clay, rudimentary tools, wooden slabs for grinding, charcoal from hearths dated to 14,500 years ago to 15,000 years ago, possibly older. In this article it says 18,500 years ago. So there's people down way down south before way thousands and thousands of years before the I3 corridor thing supposedly happened, which I don't I again, let me be clear. Me personally, I don't think I don't discount the I3 corridor thing. It may well have happened. I'm trying to get to the bottom of the dates of of when everything happened and when everything could have happened. If I was an advocate of Clovis first and nothing else, I think I would be in trouble. I think I, I would, ha once you consider a lot of the evidence here, you can really kind of get the picture and you can kind of come to your own conclusions. Uh, there's another thing that I wanted to bring up from the Smithsonian. This was in the Yukon, the Blue Fish Caves, and this was in 1970 that uh, this guy was talking about uh, humans in the Americas before Clovis first. And this, is, this has to do with uh, the horse jaw evidence. So if you see, you see this picture here, that's, that's the horse mandible. And it appears to be marked by traces of stone tools. It might prove that humans came to North America 10,000 years earlier than previously believed. Okay, back in the 70s, the guy who proposed this, I can't remember his name, um, he got lapped out of the room basically and his uh, career got, got, well, he, got, he didn't get funding and stuff. And so he was lapped out of the room. Smithsonian came back and then um, this woman from... Uh, a PhD candidate from the University of Montreal. She published this new study on the bluefish caves, and she basically confirms that humans had butchered horses and other animals there 24,000 years ago. 24,000 years ago, they were butchering horses, and they had they already had some type of infrastructure in place to start doing that. Uh, here's more from from this quote. Based on dozens of new studies, we now know that pre-Clovis people slaughtered mastodons in Washington State, dined on desert parsley in Oregon, made all-purpose stone tools that were the Ice Age version of X-Acto blades in Texas, and slept in sprawling hide-cover homes in Chile, all between 13,800 and 15,500 years ago, possibly earlier. Emphasis on possibly earlier. The study also raises serious questions about the effect of bitter, decades-long debate over the peopling of the New World. Did archaeologists in the mainstream marginalize dissenting voices on this key issue? And if so, what was the impact on North American archaeology? We were t uh, I was talking about earlier how that guy's career basically got destroyed in the 70s, and that definitely happened. There were dissent. If you had a dissenting opinion on on uh, Clovis first back then, you were pretty much just blacklisted. And Smithsonian kind of shined the light on this here. And this this horse mandible thing, I don't understand how you could argue against it. I mean, the, the it's pretty obvious that there was some human intervention here. So um, I thought that was really interesting. There's a, there's one more thing that I thought was really interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna end it with this. They found a lot uh, not too long ago. They found a, a, f a finger in Siberia. Maybe it was China somewhere there in Asia. Um, they found the Denisovan finger, and they they found that whole thing about how they found a new different uh, type of human called a uh, Homo Denisovan. Well, they found the traces of their DNA in the aborigines of australia melanesians and guess what south american natives but they're not in north american natives why don't they that's really interesting to me so this this is the reason why i think there are probably more than just these the coastal migration and the ice three corridor migration there might there might well have been some aboriginals from uh, my i guess austronesia who took boats or something to Easter Island and and probably South America? Because again, if you if you go along that coastline, there's Easter Island, which is nobody nobody knew who the original inhabitants of Easter Island were. 
but they do know that they were related to um they're probably related to the polynesians or the micronesians uh, Melanesians rather so that the, and also they found boats between Madagascar and Aus Australia as well and they were like 40,000 38,000 years old or something so that right there tells me that they, they did have they were capable of having uh, seagoing vessels of some sort and and if they made it to South America that that makes sense because of the in light of these other findings so uh, again more puzzle pieces I hope this has, I'm not even going to mention the San Diego site, the 130, in San Diego they found 130,000 year old, some remains of a human, maybe it was a Neanderthal or something, but 130,000, we don't even have to talk about that, even though I brought it up, but um, I hope that this has really uh, helped you guys understand the, the argument that's going, that's currently being worked out right now, I mean, this is 40, it's been 40 plus years now, and it, with the recent addition of all these um, puzzle pieces that, that we were finding in, in the form of evidence and, and theories and stuff like that and discoveries, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to get to around the corner. That a, a clearer picture is going to come up as it's just around the corner. The one problem, though, especially with the coastal uh, evidence, and I'm going to leave it here, is there's not in marine archaeology there's not a lot of uh research done into looking into the submerged what's now submerged along the the coastline of of the pacific there there's not a lot of um incentive for researchers to go search for those uh look more into those migrations rather they're, lo they're looking into shipwrecks stuff like that it's just not helping uh solve this issue so hopefully um, there's some <laughs> there's some marine archaeologists out there who uh, want to look further into this. Uh, please leave a comment if you found this interesting. Uh, I thought this article was cool just because I got to talk about more than just the article. I could talk about um, the actual conversation, to put it mildly, that's going on between these two uh, uh, theories. Please like comment and share this video i appreciate you guys i'm surprised i'm getting the views that i am i mean i got 34 views on a video the other day so that's really cool um follow me on twitter if you have it and i'll see you next time